Hello, today we're going to talk about enlightenment. Enlightenment is a social movement that sort of spoke out uh, for people's rights, uh, for uh, the rights of the individual, and also uh, tried to change a lot of uh, aspects about the government at the time. Now, the, before we can actually understand enlightenment, we sort of have to understand um, the government system that was there um, when enlightenment started. Um, a government system that existed was called absolutism or an absolute monarch. This is when a despot, okay, a despot, same thing as absolute monarch, um, is which a king that can basically do whatever he wants. He has complete control over society, um, and he really could not be questioned, um, or else it would be considered treason. Now, these uh, kings in Europe at the time became powerfully rich. Um, through three main things. One, they invested a lot. They gave charters to explorers and merchants, and they received a part of that uh, profit. You also have uh, taxes that they collected, uh, not just from their comp countries, uh, but also from the um, colonies that they conquered, and also from um, merchant activity as well. And you also have mercantilism. They sort of supported um, the exports from their own com country, um, so that they could, um, their country could make more money and collect more taxes. You also have this idea of divine right. Divine right is when um, the people believed the king was chosen uh, by God to be the ruler of that country. Um, and so these kings didn't only have, uh, you know, financial or military power, they also had spiritual power. And there was one guy named Thomas Hobbes, uh, and he promoted absolutism um, in his book called The Leviathan. And here you can actually see a uh, the cover of the book here. Now, he believed that uh, absolutism was good because it brought order. Having one person, uh, there wouldn't be any squabbling or arguing over making decisions, um, and he would be able to keep complete control um, over society. Uh, but uh, this idea of absolutism was questioned by uh, the Enlightenment movement. Now the things that influence Enlightenment, there's four main things that influence Enlightenment. The first one is Greek philosophy, uh, using reason rather than waiting for a revelation or, or some um, sign from God to understand things. Um, so And also just a more of a reliance on human nature rather than reliance on God. You also have uh, the scientific revolution, which is a scientific approach to conventional ideas. Uh, things like um, if the earth was the center of the universe or, you know, just understanding the world around us. But being able to uh, question and scientifically prove those uh, conventional ideas. Um, also, you have the Protestant Reformation, where Martin Luther started to speak out against the Catholic Church and against religious doctrines. And this, uh, again, is just um, the questioning of old traditional ideas sort of helped uh, the questioning of government. And then you also have uh, humanism uh, that was conveyed during the Renaissance, which basically just bas says that people can achieve great things, and they can sort of do what they um that they can do great things uh, by their own means, um, and they're not dependent on God or anybody else to do those things. Now, one of the guys that got enlightenment really going was a guy named John Locke. He wrote a book called Two Treatises on Government. Uh, he believed that people were naturally good. Um, and that's really important to understanding um, his theory. He believed that people had natural or unalienable rights that were given to them by God or nature, um, such as life, liberty, and property. Um, and he believed that since people were naturally good, that they could actually participate in government, that they could, uh, that, that the government didn't need to be so harsh or have absolute control because people were going to do um, what's good. Um, he also came up with this idea of a social contract, that the government was created to serve the people rather than the people were supposed to serve the government. Um, and he also believed in a representative democracy where people uh, vote on representatives to them to um, represent them in government. 
There were some other famous Enlightenment writers. Uh, Jean-Jacques Rousseau was the was one really important one. He wrote a book called The Social Contract, um, kind of like that idea from John Locke. And he also believed that people only obey the government that serves them. He also believed in the idea that the majority should rule. Whatever uh, most people want in society is what the government should do. And that the individual um, should submit to the majority. So if you disagreed with what the majority did, that you should still submit to it because that's um, what the majority says. Then you have Montesquieu right here. Uh, Montesquieu uh, believed th that an absolute monarch was not good because one person had power and basically could do whatever he wanted. Um, so he thought of this idea called separation of powers um, or checks and balances where you divide power of a government in between several officials so that not one of them can have too much power. And then finally you have Voltaire at the bottom. Here he is. Um, and Voltaire believed in religious freedom and that uh, religion should not be part of the government, that it should be something separate that people do because there had been so much trouble caused um, when government and religion mixed. Women were also very important in the Enlightenment movement. Um, especially uh, promoting women's rights and suffrage, which is the right to vote. Uh, even though uh, women didn't gain the right to vote, uh, they did contribute significantly to enlightenment. Um, you have Mary Wollstonecraft, which wrote The Vindication of the Rights of Women, uh, Olympia de Gouge, um, which wrote The Declaration of the Rights of Women and Female Citizens, the uh, Seneca Falls Convention, which wrote The Declaration of Sentiments. All of these spoke out um, for women's rights and, and progressed the Enlightenment movement. Um, but one big way that women played a part was hosting uh, salons. A salon is basically a gathering place where people could discuss Enlightenment ideas. Um, and so these were places where people would initially get together um, and talk about social issues, but as Enlightenment spread, they really started to discuss uh, ideas of the social contract and people's rights and religious freedom, uh, which helped get Enlightenment moving. So some of the effects of enlightenment uh, were that you had enlightened despots. Now, these are absolute monarchs um, that promote people's rights. They improve um, the people's lives that are under them, and they practice tolerance for differing ideals. And there's a couple of examples of these. Frederick of Prussia, uh, Louis XVI, which we learned about in the French Revolution, was actually beheaded um, by, in the French Revolution, but he was actually an enlightened despot. He tried to take care of the people. And then Catherine the Great of Russia, too. You also have uh, the spread of constitutional monarchies, which originally developed in England uh, during the Glorious Revolution, but this is where a king's power is limited by laws. You also have um, the idea of parliament, where you have a representative uh, of the people that make the laws, uh, that control the king. The idea of suffrage, which is the right to vote, uh, and voting rights were extended uh, during or after the Enlightenment movement to people who, uh, other people that that didn't own land before to vote you had to be able to own land, but now um, you could vote even if you didn't. A serfdom was also um, uh, abolished, and serfdom is basically the idea that uh, serfs or peasants would be tied to the land, um, and they would have to keep farming it to be able to live there uh, and give a percentage of that away. But serfdom was abolished, um, especially that with the uh, Enclosure Acts uh, kind of breaking up the commons. You also have the banning of slave trade, um, which happened before slavery was actually banned. It was made illegal to go and take people from Africa and go sell them in the, um, to a plantation. But then eventually you have the uh, banning of slavery, which occurred in the United States um, after the Civil War. Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation. Uh, and then other countries began to ban slavery, too. Uh, and then you also have independence movements in the colonies, which are pretty important as well, um, which, which we will talk about um, in the next couple of lessons. It's where the colonies are actually breaking away from their European um, mother countries um, and establishing themselves in their own government.
So, that is it for enlightenment. I hope that you enjoyed it. I'll do a little dance for you. Okay, that's it. Y'all have a good day.